In a recent update to Studio One, we got a change in the way that the splitter is used. So it's now available as a plugin. And one of the things that you can do is you can single click, which of course gives us our micro view. And then depending on the type of split that you've created, I'm gonna double click the splitter, which is the same as opening up the actual routing panel over here. If you select the channel editor icon and you select this routing icon, double clicking the splitter is pretty much the same as that. We have a really quick and easy way to be able to addition and listen to our parallel processing that we're doing from within our track. Now, this has changed the way that I do my parallel compression on my drum bus. And here we have the drums. This is the same example I used in a previous video. But here we have the drums from a session that I just mixed. I'm going to press play. That's so pretty decent balanced drum sound. We have some samples that have been added over here. We've got a kick sample and we've also got a snare sample that was added. I'm going to single click the splitter to open it up and notice how I can deactivate over here. Okay, a couple things I wanna make a really quick note of. Whenever I pull up the splitter, I do one immediate change if I need to adjust something. We've already got this happening on the uh, drum bus over here, so let's use a different example. I'm going to open up the snare track. We've got some processing on the snare, and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna click the splitter. So I'm just gonna click my add insert option, and if I start typing this out, notice we have a splitter uh, available as a plugin. So I'm gonna add this. Now, when you do a regular normal split, which is uh, basically just basic parallel processing, the way that this does, or the way that this works, is that the both splits together, if I drag this out and I extend it, both of these together will sum to equal the exact same level. Now, the idea here is that you would have no change in volume with both of these channel splits open and at zero dB. What I like to do is I like to make one change. Um, I'm gonna turn the second split all the way down. And you could either do this with the first or the second, but I always think of the first one as my main source. And I'm gonna just change this to six. The main reason I do this is because I want to actually have this whole signal chain be kind of unaffected uh, with this splitter at infinity. So with no volume added, I have no level change. I don't want both of my splits at zero dB to equal the sound that I'm used to hearing before the splitter was added. I want this one at plus six, and I want this one all the way down. So now with this splitter literally all the way down or deactivated, we should have no difference in terms of the tone we're getting. Okay, that being said, I'm going to remove this splitter and let's go back over to our drum bus. So here's a really, really simple drum setting that I've used. And like I said, I'm very close to committing now to using the splitter 100%. If I had one complaint or one suggestion, I really wish that I could right click this, this fader over here, and that I could map this to a macro control. Because one thing that I have is I work with a fader port and on the fader port, I have a really quick and easy way to select this channel and I can push the macro button. And basically what that does is it opens up the channel editor. And then if I have any of these knobs uh, assigned to anything, then I can adjust with a fader as opposed to having to grab my mouse. That being said, there is something that you could do. You could actually uh, bring a mix tool in just like this. And let me just type in the T. So I could grab a mix tool and I could actually place this mix tool after this fat channel. And then this would kind of be doing the same thing. I could right click over here and I could assign this to, usually I like to assign it to knob eight so that it's right in the middle. So what this allows me to do is basically just have a fader um, just for the purpose of blending. That being said, it's not really necessary right now. Let's just remove that from the session. I wanna show you my settings that I use to get a really awesome parallel drum compression. And I also wanna show you one cool benefit of being able to open up this micro view without having to actually open up the routing tab and use these parameters over here. So what this means is that because we know that we've adjusted this to plus six, this is the exact same as if though there was no splitter on it. And it's also handing off the signal to the next plugins in the chain after the splitter, it's handing it off at the exact same level. Now I can also do the opposite. I can basically deactivate the main sound that I'm getting and I'm just listening to the split now. 
Now I'm just listening to my compressor. The other cool thing I can do is, let's just move this up. We can really emphasize the sound of the compression. Okay, so what am I doing with my compression here? Well, I'm not doing a lot. I've dialed up the Brit comp. I've adjusted my threshold to taste so that I'm getting, I think it's between somewhere between four and eight dBs of gain reduction. Okay, let's say maybe like four or five dBs of gain reduction. Now, as for the ratio, I'm at four to one. My attack, I've actually chosen a little bit more of a quick attack. So if we go up to 30 milliseconds, it's gonna let more of the front end of the transient through. But notice our gain reduction isn't moving as much. It's a little more neutral sounding, but because we're blending in parallel, I wanna have a little bit more thwack out of this compressor. Now, that sounds pretty good to me. We could actually dial this down, make it even quicker. Now we're starting to sound really compressed. I want a little bit of the transient detail to still pop through. Hence, I've settled on this setting right over here. Now in terms of my release, I want this to be releasing as quickly as possible. Makeup gain, it's, it is relevant, but it's not that important because if we left this at zero and we turned up this splitter level a little bit more, it would kind of be the same thing. But basically I just, with makeup gain, sometimes what I'll do is, let's say I'm doing four dBs of compression, I might set my makeup gain to two or three unless I really want to squash something. So I probably just did this by ear. Now one last thing, Thing that I've been doing a lot lately is I have a warm audio bus compressor and on the hardware it has different settings for basically um, a low cut or a high pass filter from the compression circuit or rather the detection circuit and it has this one setting on that's at 105 hertz and I've been using it a lot lately and it's kind of the one that I've settled on and my compressor pretty much always has that uh, engaged at 105 hertz. And what it does is it allows a certain amount of the low frequency information to pass through without making your compressor freak out. Now it's also worth noting that when you mix into it like this, that it would definitely change your balances because you're basically leaving the low stuff away from the compression circuit. So this is something worth experimenting. I'm not saying that you have to use the exact frequency that I do, but basically at this point, it's just dialing in something with a really fast release, adjust your attack to taste, but don't be afraid to put your attack on the quicker side. And the really awesome benefit of the new way that the splitter is shown as a plugin is that it's really easy to hear just what you are listening to in parallel that's compressed. Now, what I would usually do before this is I would always create a send and then because the idea is I really love having things on faders. Now, full disclosure, I've kind of settled on some, some things that I just, based on the way that I mix, they just tend to work. For example, if I mix my drums and I have a drum sound that I'm pretty comfortable with in terms of a direct sound, let's bring our fader back to Unity. I'm gonna deactivate my parallel path, which has the fat channel compression. Let's bring in our drums. Also, let's just address this really quickly. This limiter, I'm not using the enhance function or really anything, and all I'm doing is I've set the true peak ceiling on this to kind of just lop off the drums at a certain point. And it's not really going uh, a, a, a lot. It's not taking that much off. It's just happening probably in just a couple places. Maybe, I'm gonna guess just at the loud parts, maybe here. Okay, it might not even kick in until we bring in the parallel compression, but this limiter, just ignore this for now because it's really not doing too much. But the idea for me here is that I really love not having to think about, do I send something out pre-fader or post-fader or how is that gonna uh, mess with the effects if I also am sending out reverbs and I have maybe a drum room sound or something like that. Having the splitter available as a plugin and being able to simply deactivate my main dry signal, which we've set to plus six, so it's at the exact same level, and then just listen to this and compensate for the volume if needed. It's a huge deal for me. Okay, let's bring this back, we'll take this out, and now let's talk about how I generally work with this. So we can make note of this figure, it's minus 12.9, but basically the way that I like to work is here's my drum sound. This is just my dry drum sound, not doing any compression. And then basically with this signal chain in place, 
And I've dialed in my compression with the Brit Comp, which I could easily try a different compressor out, but it's not really the point. All we have to do then is kind of dial this in until we hear it and then back it off a little bit and that should be okay. You notice there somewhere at around minus 10, we started to be able to hear it. I'm gonna actually open up the routing editor and let's do it here. Okay, definitely it's audible there. I can hear a perceived level in terms of the RMS is coming up. Not only that, but because of the aggressive compression settings and the way that we've set the compressor and how it's interacting with the groove and what the drums are doing, we get this nice ambience lift and, and this nice thwack that's backing things up, but we still have all the clarity and punch and the dynamics of the actual raw performance without kind of suffering any of the, um, I won't call them, bad or negative, but some of the uh, artifacts that happen with the compression. Basically, what I want to do is retain all that punch and presence because I like the way that the drummer has performed, but I just kind of want to reinforce that. So it's all about just dialing this up right till we can hear it. There, it's definitely audible there and then backing off a little bit. Now, once that's done, a simple AB where we can bring our compressed signal that we're blending in, we can bring it in and out with a single click. Kind of boring. And you can hear a different energy that comes in, specifically with the way the room sounds, the way the kick sounds, um, the sustain of the actual room itself. So this I find to be a really, really great approach when doing parallel compression, quite simply because I just find it really easy to isolate and dial in whatever you're trying to do compression wise to get it to sound gritty, really aggressive, to get it to sound exactly the way that you need it to, that I can just basically kill all of my dry signal and just isolate this one side of the stream, which is gonna be my heavily processed side, and then just bring it back in. I can A-B things really quickly, bringing it, uh, muting it and bringing it right back in. And I also find that this is not too bad in terms of dialing things in. And if I ever really need uh, fader control, if I need to get really hands on with this and I really kind of want to try to dial in a fader to find that sweet spot, uh, in the meantime, since we're not able to link this um, splitter volume to the macro controls, like I said, I just open this up and add a mix tool, place it after the fat channel. And then it's just about using the fader and I can get that same type of blend while using a macro control on my fader port 16. Anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. I hope that you enjoyed this content. If you did, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I will do my absolute best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.